I don't know about any of you, but I've lost my kid at Disneyland. My wife's not in here, right? <laughs> she may not know the story. No. <laughs> all right. So I just want to give you God's word real quick. You know, you, if you know me at all, I tell stories and I bring God's word into it. Um, I try to keep it entertaining even for kids. So if you, you say, hey, where is that in the Bible? For today, we're talking about Daniel. Daniel, um, we're going to be in chapter 4 and chapter 5. But if you're trying to follow along, you'll get lost. Because <laughs> um, I just go through it telling a story and I skip around and make the point. What I want you to see is God's word is true and it applies to us today. And if you will read God's word and start, study God's word, you will see that God, um, even though this was written thousands of years ago, it can, you can read it and it's like God speaking to you right here, right now. And if you can see that God's word is not dead, that's why we call it the living word. It's his word that continues to live forever and it applies to us every day of our lives. God speaks to us if you'll just read his word. Um, first of all, I, I've been talking about um, being a Christian believing in Jesus Christ. If you don't know what being a Christian is, it's giving your life over to God, over to Jesus Christ himself. It is saying, you know what? I have done so many things in my life that have been wrong. I am a sinner. I, I, I cannot, um, I, I'm just not a good person. But the forgiveness that we receive is when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, who says, if we will confess our sins, if we will just admit, you know what, I was born a sinner, I've lived a sinful life, if we will just confess to God and say, through Jesus Christ, I confess my sins, that I've, I'm a sinner, and I can't be as righteous as what God is um, wanting me to be by myself, I can't do it. And so through Jesus Christ, he says, if you'll confess your sins and confess that he is Lord, he will forgive you of your sins. That means total forgiveness. And it's so great because he says, not only does he forgive you, he forgets about it. He doesn't bring it back up next week and say, yeah, but remember that thing you did a long time ago? No, God says he will forget about it. You say, wait a minute, God can forget? Come on. If God's a real God, how does he forget? See, God loves us that much. That he says that he will forget. You know how he does it? He makes himself forget. Now there's something that people say all the time. Well, you know what? We need to forgive and forget. I don't know about you. I don't have that ability. I cannot make myself forget what someone's done to me in the past. I can forgive them, but I still know what they've done. Not that I hold it against them. Um, so this is real powerful. And you think about it. For me to be able to say, I forgive you, means that I forgive you, but I know what you've done, but I forgive you for what you've done. But for me to be able to say, I forgive you and forget, that's impossible for me to do. I can't control my mind like that. But God, who is all-powerful, almighty, says, I will forgive you and forget all about it. Isn't that wonderful? He cast it away. He'll never bring it up to you again. And so being a believer, being a Christian means that you confess to Jesus that you're a sinner. You confess to him that he is Lord and that he should be Lord of your life. And you're saying, God, take me as I am. And he takes you as um, a sinful person and he gives you a new life in him, which means that you are righteous enough to stand before God. You are righteous enough to speak to God. Anything you've done? No, it's because of Jesus Christ. It says that he washes your sin away and you are as white as snow. It means that before God, you are perfect in his eyes. You can speak to God like he is your earthly father. You can speak to him and talk to him. And I tell people this, that whenever you do that, he doesn't say that, oh, you're one of his servants that stands over in the corner and watches the doors, or maybe you clean the house. He says something greater than that. He says that you become sons and daughters of the one true God. You're not just a servant. You're brought in as adopted brothers and sisters, um, sons and daughters. We're a big family of God. You are now sons and daughters of God. In the adopted sense. Anybody ever know about the adoption? You ever, anybody adopted? Yeah, um, there's people that are adopted. You know, some of us are just born in the family. You're stuck with me, mom and dad. <laughs> I was born to you and here I am. But adoption is greater. It means that that person, 
the mom or dad saw you, loved you, who you were, and it brought you into their family knowing who you were. Knowing all your goof-ups. And that's like God. God sees you for who you are, and he brings you in to that relationship to be called a son and daughter of the Most High God. The, um, so I've been talking about this relationship that we have. And Paul in the Bible, there is um, an apostle, a Paul, and there's also an apostle John. Paul explains it as we are the church, and that is great. We are the church. God lives inside of us. His spirit guides us and directs us and talks to us. But there's something else. Not only um, uh, is it explained as we're the church, John explains it as we are family. We are family. We are sons and daughters of God, and we are the family of God. We are one big family, but if you're going to be part of the body or part of the family of God, that means that you're going to do more than just sit there. Don't you hate it when you have those family reunions and you have mom in there washing the dishes, dad's moving all the chairs around, getting everything ready, and you got those people that just come in and they sit down and don't help at all. They just watch you do all the work. But boy, when that food comes out, they're the first to get in line. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, well, God wants us to be family and body of the, uh, the body of Christ, the body um, um, that he is showing us that we have a job to do. We're not just going to be this dead body. We're going to be part of this. He wants to show you, you're not just somebody that I've cast away. I want you involved. Because everybody has this. Everybody says this to me. Well, if God's so powerful, why can't he do it himself? Well, God is all-powerful, but if he did it himself, why would he need us? I want to be part of this. I want to be in love with a God who loves me. And, you know, I, and I'll take this as an example. My wife and I, man, there's so many times that um, there's, I see stuff that needs to be done, and I go do it, and then I run to the store, and I buy the stuff that we need, and I go around town, and I come back, and my wife's like, where'd you go? I go, well, there's stuff that needs to be done. So I went, and she goes, well, I would have wanted to go. Well, I didn't even think of that. I just did it all. Well, she didn't get to be part of it. So the things that I'm doing, she's not getting to be part of it. So it's not her house anymore. It's my house. I'm taking care of it, and I'm doing it all. And she just kind of is there. Well, God doesn't want you to just think you're there. He wants you to be part of it. He wants you to be part of the family. He wants you to know how powerful he is and how he provides for you and takes care of you. But he wants you to be part and involved in it. That's why, yes, God could do it all by himself, but it knocks you out if he does it that way. And he doesn't want you to be cast out. He wants you to draw near to him. Now, there's prophets in the Old Testament. I just told you about the apostles, and the apostles were called by Jesus Christ. But there's prophets in the Old Testament. Before we saw Jesus here on earth, Jesus has always been here, but before he came here to earth as we know him, um, there were prophets, and prophets could write scripture. They could speak for God. Now, here's the deal. If you said that you were a prophet, and you, got the, you, you gave a prophecy, and you were wrong, it was so strict that they would put you to death if you were wrong. So you really don't want to be a prophet unless God really calls you. All right, so being a prophet meant that you were speaking for God, and God is never wrong. So if you're going to tell us what God says, and it doesn't work, then you're not listening to God. That was the point behind that. So you would, you would be put to death. Well, Daniel, in the Bible, Daniel was one of the men that God used to um, interpret dreams, to speak for him, to tell the people. And several times in Daniel, you find that there are visions or dreams that people have and they come to Daniel. And they all ask him. And it started back when Nebuchadnezzar was king. And Nebuchadnezzar was a mean king. Boy, he, if he didn't like you, he would have you put to death. And then one time he had this dream and no one, all the magicians and all the um, leaders that um, Nebuchadnezzar had, all these people that say they could read palms and do all this fancy talking to the spiritual world, no one could tell what that dream meant. But they called Daniel to come before him and he came up and says, I can tell you. And it's through God is why I can tell you. And see, that's one thing about us. We know that God um, doesn't need us because we're not strong enough to do this. Daniel didn't know what that dream meant without God. God gave him the vision and um, the, the way to explain that dream. And anything that you do through Jesus Christ, remember this. It's not through your power or your might. It's through Jesus Christ himself. It's through God who gives you the power and the ability to do what you're doing. 
As a believer in Jesus Christ, we know that all things come from him. And then we also know that he provides for us and takes care of us. Well, Daniel was called and at first, as far as for Nebuchadnezzar and telling him, and then later on, Nebuchadnezzar's son, who was years down the line after Nebuchadnezzar um, had some issues going on and then finally passed away, and then his son took over the kingship, and his son was the one that went around and made parties. He threw parties for thousands of people. And then all of them would come and he had plenty of wives and concubines and he just party down. And then all of a sudden, this handwriting comes on the wall. Just up and, and it's like, where'd that hand come from? Just a handwriting, writing these words. So he looks around and he's like, hey, somebody tell me what that says. And then nobody knows. All of his leaders, all of these people, they just, they, well, 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 we don't know what it says. And then the queen comes in and the queen says, Hey, your father, Nebuchadnezzar, had a leader named Daniel. And this leader named Daniel, he was um, a man of the um, Hebrew God, the God of Israel and the, the Hebrews. And he said, um, he was well known to your father because he's the one that interpreted dreams. And he knew because God gave him the, the way to explain these things. So the son says immediately, says, bring him to me. So Daniel comes in and Daniel stands before him and he, it, he says, hey, you know what? He goes, I heard a lot about you. The queens told me, other peoples have told me that you have the ability to explain dreams. He goes, what about this writing that we see? This hand came up in the air from nowhere and just wrote this out. And he says, I can tell you. But let me tell you something. Your father, who was I was able to tell him what this dream meant. And then that came to be truth when he ended up going out into the wilderness like a wild man, like a wild animal. And then he finally understood who God was. And then he came back and you know this. You know that your father turned to God. And that he did some wicked things in his past. But he turned to God. And he saw what God had done. All these um, things that had happened because of his evilness. And then God changed him and made him a new person. He goes, you know better. Why are you going back and you're, you're throwing these parties and everybody's getting drunk and you're serving these other idols and these worshiping these false gods? He goes, why are you doing that? He goes, let me tell you what the writing says. And he sits there and he explains the writing to him. And he makes him the third highest leader in the whole kingdom. That night, Belshazzar died, which made Darius um, the new um, ruler of the land. Darius comes in and he says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have 120 satraps of these um, people that are going to lead the town, lead the country. I'm going to use them as the people who are going to tell me about um, what's going on. And then we're going to make decisions based on it. And he felt good about it. He goes, I have 120 people who are going to um, come and meet together. And we're going to run, the, um, be the leaders of this kingdom. Great idea. He put Daniel as one of those leaders to oversee all the other leaders. Daniel, everything he did because it was from God, just blossomed. It was wonderful. Everything that he touched just worked well. And these other guys look around and go, whoa, 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 we don't like that. We don't like that at all. Because this guy's getting all the uh, kudos. Everybody likes him. He's doing everything good. We got to get rid of this guy. So they go up to Darius and they say to King Darius, they say, hey, look, we've got an idea. All of the counselors and the leaders got together. And we decided this. We decided that the best thing that we can do for 30 days, for 30 days, no one should pray to their God or, to, uh, or seek counseling from anyone else except you. King Darius, like, hey, you got a point there. It's about time this kingdom sees me for who I am. Uh huh, there goes that ego. Oh, don't you hate it whenever um, some, you, you, you can't even see what people are doing because your ego gets in the way? 
See, they didn't come up to him and say, hey, they're going to nail, and, uh, um, nail Daniel, and they're going to trap him. No, they didn't say that at all. They said, hey, we're going to make you the most powerful man in the world. For 30 days, nobody can call out to their gods. Nobody can go out and get counsel from anyone else. Nobody can speak to others in, 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 um, in a high level. Everybody has to come to you and praise you because you're King Darius. He stamps it. He approves it. And if you know anything about the, um, the way the kingdomship worked, once it's stamped and sealed, it can't be changed even by the king. If you look in the book of Daniel, if you know where we're at right now, we're up in um, chapter uh, 6. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <sighs> It says this, then these commissioners and satraps came by agreement to the king and spoke to him as follows. King Darius, live forever. That's what they always tell him. Live forever. <laughs> it's a great greeting because if you say die forever, then you probably die yourself. All right, so live forever. All the commissioners of the kingdom and the pre um, prefects and the satraps and the high officials and the governors have consulted together and the king should establish a statute and enforce an injunction that anyone who makes a petition to any god or man besides you O oh god for 30 days um oh king i said i said oh god sorry about that oh king for 30 days shall be cast into the lion's den the king established that statute now, when Daniel knew that the document was signed, so Daniel totally knew that the document was signed. He totally knew this. This is in verse 10 of chapter 6. Now, when Daniel knew that the document was signed, he entered his house. Now, in the roof chamber, he had windows that opened towards Jerusalem, and he continued kneeling on his knees three times a day, praying and giving thanks before God as he had been doing previously. Let me tell you, if you are going to be a believer in Jesus Christ, if you are going to turn your life over to him, I've been talking about the body of Christ. We are to be a body of Christ, and the body of Christ never stops. We continue to serve God continuously. No matter what man or government tells us, we know that our power comes from God and the most that anyone can do to us is kill us. That's the most they can do. But the God in heaven is the one that casts into hell or brings into heaven forever. See, we know who we're serving. We know who our God is. And if you are going to be part of the body of Christ, I told you it's about communicating. We pray. We listen to him by reading his word. But there's something else. You must stand bold and know that the one that you believe in is absolutely true and powerful. You must know that the God that you serve is for real. I would hate to be bowing down to an idol that is made out of wood. I would hate to bow down to an idol that is made out of gold. They can't do anything. I go to the Chinese restaurants and I see the Buddha dolls and everything. They got food there. I, I want to, you know, the Buddha doll never, ever eats the food. I, 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 I know they have, I know what the belief is and with the, um, the whole Buddhism thing. But I just want to say, if you really want a God who's going to speak to you, if you really want a God who loves you and communicates with you, one that's alive and well, you know what? You give your life to Jesus Christ and not only will you hear him, you will know he's inside of you and you will have hope that no other idol can do. It's for real. And, in, 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 and not only that, you can have so much faith in it because not only because the Bible said it, but because you get to see it come to life. When you see it come to life, you know that God is real, that Jesus Christ really did exist. The number one thing that people ask is, well, how do you know that God is real? Let me tell you how I know, because he lives with inside of me. He lives with inside of me, and he guides me, and he directs me, and I pray to him, and he answers me, and I don't hear voices in my head like some people do that need to go to the hospital, but I, 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 I hear him inside my heart, and he speaks to me, and it's so strong and powerful. You say, oh, those are voices in there. No, if it's voices in the head, we need to go get checked out. If it's the voice in your heart that no one else could speak like that, it's God and only God. He's real. Daniel knew he was real. 
And Daniel wasn't going to take anybody's excuse for not praying. Daniel says, I pray three times a day. I'm going to keep praying three times a day. In fact, I'm leaving my windows open. You want to check this out? I am going to pray. Then he prayed three times a day. And then the satraps and the commissioner came up, ran up before Darius. Hey, Darius, you know, you signed this little agreement thing that says that, you know, when you stamped it, you put your approval that anybody that prays to their God or worships anybody or gets counseling from anybody, you, besides you, they need to go into the lion's den. Darius says, yeah, that, that's what I signed. I said, well, Daniel. Darius is really good friends with Daniel. He really likes Daniel. And he didn't even think about it. When these guys were putting him up on the pedestal and making it all about him, he never once thought about his friend Daniel. He says, well, Daniel's been praying to his guy. So guess what? You can't change it, but Daniel has to go to the lion's den. Darius stands before before Daniel. It says, the king gave orders and Daniel was brought and cast into the lion's den. The king spoke and said to Daniel, let me tell you this. First of all, Daniel was a man of God and helped him uh, with Nebuchadnezzar, the, probably one of the, the meanest kings around. Put, put anybody to death. But God showed Daniel favor and Nebuchadnezzar ended up treating Daniel like a son. And then if, moving forward, the evil son of Nebuchadnezzar makes him third in command for the kingdom. See what God does even in the worst circumstances? God takes care of his people. And then he moves him right along. And now Darius, who was friends with Daniel, didn't see the trap that was coming around. Didn't see that these men were trying to do this to Daniel and have him killed. But then all of a sudden, the queen came up to um, the son of Nebuchadnezzar and said, I know a man. Darius now comes up to Daniel and says this to Daniel. Your God, whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. Darius, who is not a believer. All these other people, not believers in the true God that Daniel believes in. But because of Daniel being part of the church, the body of God, he is a prophet of God, a spokesman. And then when Daniel goes and is thrown into the lion's den, Darius, the friend who has just seen Daniel, he's seen what he does, he's seen what he believes, he knows all of this about Daniel. Not even a believer says, your God will what? Save you. He'll protect you. If you are a part of the body of Christ, if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you know that he saved you, if you know that he's all-powerful, if you know that he created everything that is in existence, then you know that there's nothing greater than him. And you know as a believer that no matter what anybody says, you are to stand firm on what you believe. And if you are going to be part of the body of Christ, you must not waver. Hey, sometimes I'm for you, sometimes I'm against you. No, God wants um, children of God to be true children of God. And know that he is their provider and protector. Daniel knew this. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. A stone was brought and put in front of it so that there was no way to escape. But during the night, Darius was worried about his friend. And he was worried that the lions had just eaten him up. And he couldn't sleep. He couldn't eat. He didn't have anybody around him. He got rid of everybody. And then in the morning time, he runs down. The king arose at dawn and at bray deck, And he went in haste to the lion's den. And when he had come near to Dan- the den to Daniel, he cried out with a troubled voice, Daniel! Man, could you imagine being Darius and saying, 
I don't know about any of you, but I've lost my kid at Disneyland. My wife's not in here, right? <laughs> she may not know the story. No. <laughs> but it's that moment that you say your child's name and they don't respond. Or you think that there's a kid that looks like him. And you say the name and the kid doesn't turn around. It's that minute that sounds, seems like eternity. That you're like, where is he? Where is she? I mean, you're looking and there's that time and space that you get into your own world. And it's like eternity. It's never ending. And you, you can't hear the person say it soon enough. It's like, will you say something? When he came to the den to Daniel, he cried out with a troubled voice. The king spoke and said to Daniel, listen to what he said. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you constantly serve, been able to deliver you from the lions? Who are you talking to, man? <laughs> Who he thinks he's talking to? Why would he have a whole couple of sentences here, a question, if he thinks that those lions ain't him? No, because Daniel has shown that he believes in God and he trusts God. And God has done so many great, wonderful things that God is not going to desert him here. Why would he be saying anything if he really thought that Daniel was eaten up? See, he's starting to believe in this God too. And then listen, what happens next? Then Daniel spoke to the king. Oh, king, live forever. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's like, hey, man, I got two little kitty cats in here. We're all good. Um, it says, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth, and they have not harmed me in as much as I, I was found innocent before him. And also towards you, oh, king, I have committed no crime. Darius, I've could you imagine that? I mean, you're the, you're the one that gave the command to throw him into the lion's den. Now, this guy's on the other side with the lions. I mean, he's probably, that's probably uh, one of those circus tricks, man. I mean, these lions are jumping up and down in there, probably running around the walls. I don't know. D Daniel is, at, like, in a great new world. He's in there with lions, like, oh, yeah, everything's good. <laughs> they ate a few rats. I don't know. <laughs> the truth is, God shut the mouths of those lions. I'll tell you, they didn't eat anything all night. I, I was joking about the rat thing because here's what happens next. Darius was so upset. He went and got the ones that put this little thing together and said, all right, you're going to be thrown in there. And he threw them in there and their families and the lions ate. And they ate a lot. So some of us think, oh, well, the lions just weren't hungry. No, they were real hungry. Just God shut the mouth of those lions. And Daniel knew who to serve. It's short and sweet tonight. I don't talk a lot about um, this because I know we, we are anxious to do a lot of things tonight. But I, I do want to um, ask you a very important question. It's the main point of our ministry. Our ministry has one true mission. And that is to be seed planters. That is to spread the word of God to people every time that we get an opportunity. Today, I want you to know that the um, word of God is spread. We spread the seed. But it's up to you to decide to hear it and accept it. I will tell you that as Daniel, there is only one true God. Jesus says in his own words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. But here's the deal. He doesn't even make it hard. He doesn't even make it like you have to pass a 10-question um, quiz or anything. I mean, he makes it so simple. He says, if you will com admit, if you will just confess that you're a sinner. <laughs> That's easy to do. Man, I made some big bad mistakes in my life. I mean, confess that you're a sinner and then repent from that. Say, you know what? I'm tired of doing it because I've seen what happens. I've seen my mess ups. I've seen what sin does. It just destroys my life. It destroys everything. That I, I want something in my life that is better than what I've been doing. So he says, what? Invite me in to direct you and give you guidance and help you and give you hope. What's that hope? I hope this stuff works. No, not that kind of hope. <laughs> I know, it's like the word hope. That probably wasn't translated right or something. I'm like, oh, well, I'm still hoping it. No, the hope is when you die, there's hope for you. You don't actually die. 
As a believer in Jesus Christ, you go, the, the Bible says you are instantly with the Father. When you close your eyes, it's seriously, it's like you close your eyes, you wake up and you're in the kingdom. You're like, whoa, that was awesome. No one else can say that. No one else besides the people who believe in Jesus Christ can say that. And the Bible is clear. Everyone else goes to eternal death. And I don't think any of us want to go there. I don't think any of us want to spend eternity in pain and suffering. You say, well, that sounds like a mean God. Well, God's not casting you into hell. God is saying, if you want to spend eternity with me, let me help you. But if you don't, the consequences of sin is death. It's misery. And I don't want you to be there. And he said he doesn't want anyone to perish. He doesn't want any of you to go to hell. He does not want any of you. And that's why he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come down there myself. I'm going to die on the cross. I'm going to drip my blood. So that you won't go to hell. But you have to do your part. My wife and I stood right here when we had our marriage vows. I said mine, and she said hers, and we both said I do. If you want a relationship with Jesus Christ, God's already said, I do. He's waiting for you to say I do. And then you're in a relationship with him.